and welcome to another episode of Keeping Up with Kendall. Hi, my name is Dr. Tony Cruz. I'm the campus president here at the Kendall campus of Miami-Dade College. And we're coming to you from the fabulous Learning Commons at the Kendall campus. And today we have us, with us not just one, not two, but three special guests, professors of art here at the Kendall campus. We have our fabulous Professor Basile, Professor Silva, and Professor Chirinos. Welcome to the three of you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you for joining us here today on the show. And uh, we're gonna jump right into questions because we got three of you and I, got, I know that you have a lot to share, okay? <laughs> so first and foremost, the question is, you know, you each have your own journeys of how you got here as professors. And so share with us a little bit about that journey and why you chose teaching as a profession. Okay, I'll go. So um, I chose teaching very early. I actually was in high school when I chose teaching. Wow. And that was because I had um, such strong faculty. I grew up in New York. I was in the public school system on Long Island. Mm -hmm. um, and the, the high school teachers there, um, most of them had secondary degrees and were very encouraging and bringing college level you know, projects to the classroom. Mm -hmm. And we had a program where it was a mentorship program. So as a junior and senior in high school, I was mentoring um, freshmen and sophomore. And that's how I knew I was in love with, with the teaching profession from the perspective of sharing, sharing yeah. knowledge, sharing information. Um, and that was, so that was very early on. That's and then early. I just, yeah, yeah. And then I just continued down that path, always having in mind that I would be an educator and an artist. So, wow. Nice. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Nice. Crystal? My path wasn't that clear. Uh, I didn't understand the whole idea of teaching till I was um, an undergraduate in sculpture. Mm -hmm. And I was asked to take care of the beginning students mm -hmm. and essentially it was like teaching a lesson. Mm -hmm. And I realized that it came naturally. And my mentor always said that um, you needed a job to support your habit and your habit is making art. Nice. And might as well do something that you're comfortable with and you enjoy doing. And mm -hmm. that's how it came to be. And obviously, once I got to grad school, then you mm -hmm. have to teach. You have to do it. So yep. And it really just started the ball rolling. And yeah. I enjoyed it. And I still do. That's awesome. But we're glad. Yeah. <laughs> we're really glad about that. My path is crazy. Uh-oh. All right. We're going to so, hang so, on to this one. All so right. I got a full scholarship here at Miami Dade Community College, Kendall Campus. Mm -hmm. Uh, with a stipend. South? It was south of the south, time? South. It was south, south at the time, yeah. right? Yeah. And, uh, and on my second semester, I lost everything. Wow. I wasn't prepared for college. Mm -hmm. So I had to seek employment. And I got very lucky. I got a job at Miami Children's Hospital uh, being the assistant to a medical photographer. And two months later, he quit. They gave me the job, mm -hmm. which was like unbelievable. Mm -hmm. Uh, and I started paying for my own school. So it took me 10 years to finish Miami Dade. I didn't know what teaching was mm -hmm. in that sense of teaching art. Um, I started working at Baptist and they asked me to teach community classes. So I taught photography for old people. Okay. Point and shoot cameras. Right. And so my first class had like 80 students. It was crazy. Um, and for some reason, they all followed me when I walked out the door asking me question. And I said, there must be something that I'm doing right. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's what turned it on. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, then I went to graduate school and came straight here. Interesting. So each of you a little bit different, mm -hmm. right? And then up in the same place with that passion yeah. uh, for teaching. And obviously here at the college, you know, our primary mission is teaching and learning. Mm -hmm. So it's very important to have individuals like yourselves that are so dedicated to, their, to your students, to your craft and what you do. Um, but each of you, I know, you know, you have, you teach, that's the common thing, but you all have your own things that you like to do and things, maybe special <clears throat> projects that you're working on. In addition to obviously your, your teaching, uh, what you do as a, as a, as a professor. So it's also about something that you're excited about, that you're currently working on, that you'd like the public to know about. Okay. But, well, I think we're all living artists. Yes. Yeah. Okay. We're all working You know, artists. we're not dead. So, <laughs> that's a good thing. That's you know, a good thing. So, yeah. But we're all living we artists. Need, we need important. better technology if yes. that's the case. Yeah. Right? But we, we, yeah. That's good. We're all professional artists, artists yeah. in the community, actually. And um, so, I mean, something I'm excited about would be my second solo exhibition at the LNS Gallery. Mm -hmm. um, the opening is going to be September 16th. So it's coming up really quickly mm -hmm. from six to nine. Um, I'm very excited about it because it's the second time I have this opportunity to show all my work 
um, together at one time instead of being in a group exhibition. Um, excitement also sometimes is hand in hand with nervous and mm -hmm. uh, performing. Yes. Um, and so in this particular exhibition, I'm creating an artwork. Um, I looked it up, as far as I know, it's gonna be the largest relief print that's ever been created. Wow. I think the largest is Albert Durer. Um, and that was about 10 feet a little by maybe 12. Mm -hmm. And my project is 10 feet by 27 feet. Wow. So it's, um, it's arduous, it's frightening, mm -hmm. But I, like I tell students, nothing good comes out of being safe. Mm -hmm. You have to take, take risk. risk. Yeah, the risk is and so with excitement, there's mm -hmm. risk, um, uh, you know, and, and just this, this drive to be better. So mm -hmm. that, that's really what I'm excited about is my so. upcoming exhibition and creating this, this particular artwork in the moment. So. Sounds exciting. Yes. So big risk, but big reward. I think so. I yeah. hope so. Yeah. That's what we have to hope for, yeah. You don't have a choice. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, yeah, ex excitement and anxiety always are at the same time, right? Mm -hmm. So um, both Professor Basile and I are in a very important women's show at the LNS Gallery. It's called Women at Large, and this particular show focuses on women given um, large spaces in a gallery setting, which is not a very common thing. Mm -hmm. And um, for that show, she has a print, and then I have a new work, done in ceramics. I'm not a ceramic sculptor. So again, it was trying something different, something new, because mm -hmm. I like learning new processes and techniques. And it's more about the concept of the work and then the material should follow to help convey that concept, right? Sure. So it's not, I don't work in one particular thing. So that was really exciting. And uh, tonight we have a conversation about it at the LNS gallery at okay. 6 p.m. So that's going to be adding to this whole idea of um, women in the gallery setting and in the museum setting. Excellent. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that. Mm -hmm. Well, what I'm excited about is my mm -hmm. book. Okay. We'll the Precipice was published uh, November of 21. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm going to have a book signing at Books and Books mm -hmm. in Coral Gables, September 22nd. And I'm super excited about that. Have a dialogue with uh, the people that come in about these images that are in this book, uh, 25 years in the making. Mm -hmm. And so I'm super excited about like, uh, you know, it's like sending your kid out in the world and seeing what happens to it. So yeah. I'm excited to see what response I'm getting from the community here. Excellent. Well, thank you for that as well. And, you know, I know that <clears throat> each of you um, as artists and as professors inspire our students every day with the work that you do with them. Um, but I would like to know, the question is, the big question here is, who has inspired you? And it could be, again, it could be somebody from the art world. It could be a relative. It could be a friend. It could be somebody that you don't even know, right? right. I mean, sometimes we, we follow people. Uh, maybe not, now we, we, you know, there's more ways of following people. But, you know, maybe we read a book once or we uh, saw some, something, a show or something, and it kind of said, oh, I, you know, that person really inspires me to follow my passion. Right. Who would that be? Okay. Well, it's tough to pin one person. Okay. I'm just going to put that right there because your growth as an individual, as you go through college, as you become a professional artist, there's different people along the way mm -hmm. that support you in that in that endeavor. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's we're not exactly a discipline of, <laughs> you know, fast pace, get a job right away, make a lot of money. So it's important to have these people. But I would say um, the foundation inspiration is my high school teacher, uh, Dan Christoffel. Um, he was overly enthusiastic about making art all the time. He created a college level environment. Um, you know, I'd be in the classroom and he'd be playing jazz, you know, and I'd be like, who's that? What's that? And we're learning about Miles Davis and Charlie Parker on top of learning how to be a great artist. Or I'll never forget the afternoon I said to him, it was all things considered at five o'clock. And I said, what's oh, that? I'm he sure. goes, well, that's national public radio. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I mean, I'm eight, 17, 18 years old and these things are happening and my eyes are opening and it was just truly inspiring. And along the way throughout my education, I have to say, once I got to the college level, there were different female professors that supported me tremendously. And I would not be a printmaker today mm -hmm. if it wasn't for Professor Lisa Drost at the University of Miami. 
I mean, you know, I would not have made the effort to graduate with a master's degree with extra credits in another discipline if it wasn't for my painting professor, Jane Barrow. Mm -hmm. So, and they are still living, working artists that are in galleries, um, professional mm -hmm. artists. And I think that's really where the inspiration comes from because you see them be successful and you think, well, yeah, can I it. can do this. Yeah. Absolutely. Great. Absolutely. And I couldn't pinpoint it down to something like that because I thought about this question. I thought this is the most difficult question <laughs> yes. because of the different changes throughout one's life. And I was a fortunate child in the sense that my parents were very supportive um, with me being an artist since I was a little kid. So mm -hmm. they thought it was the most noble thing. So I was like, awesome. That's great. Yeah. It is great. Um, but as you move along, like there's all these different things that happen in your life and, you know, you read books and for artwork as an adult I was like oh Ernst Tako 19th century biologist like without him I wouldn't see the world the same way and my work is really looking at fungus and really small things that most people don't even bother looking at mm. and I find that inspirational so it's all of these wonderful things within our world that we have a tendency to um, ignore mm -hmm. or overlook overlook or, because mm -hmm. we're so busy we don't know how these things mm -hmm. are we think they're gross whatever the case mm -hmm. may be those are the things that constantly turn my brain on so that i think that's the best way i can answer that question well thank you i i have to say that um, I, i'm gonna blend both of you guys together <laughs> because i had you know a teacher in high school that was just amazing uh susan mcguire and um and she was just phenomenal teacher and uh she's the one that told me you should apply to Miami Dade they were giving free money out and I did it like I think within a week you know and then I lost it all she doesn't know by the way I, I, <laughs> now she does, now she does. <laughs> um, so you know uh, and I dedicated my book to her oh, very nice. because that's how much she meant to me oh. um and then you know other people along the way but if you've ever been in the dark room and process a sheet of black and white film when you put it in that chemistry and you try to figure out the scientific artistic combination that mm -hmm. is blending there mm -hmm. and you see this print comes out mm -hmm. that inspires me mm -hmm. yeah. and so i do that every day and it just keeps going it keeps me moving that's great that's a great answer to me. <laughs> yeah great yes, answer. exactly great answer. survey great says answer. great answer yeah. yeah i love that i love that so Maybe another, I don't know if it's as tough a question, but um, you know, I think that we have an audience out there that's looking for wisdom from people. You know, you're all three of you very experienced in your craft and maybe in the craft, but maybe also in life, you know, any words of wisdom for our students, for the community? I have, yeah, I, I spent some time thinking about it. It was tough in the beginning to think about, but uh, what I've come to the conclusion is that the most important things um, should be that you have discipline, you know, mm -hmm. um, because being an artist is a practice of discipline mm -hmm. and being able to accept that you're not great at everything, you know, and that that's okay, yeah. you know, and that because you fail at doing something to continue to try anyway, because it's mm -hmm. important to you, you know, mm -hmm. not to let things that are important to you fall by the wayside because you think you can't. Right. And I think it's human condition that we tell ourselves, oh, well, I don't know if I can do this. I don't know. We all do that. I do that. I'm doing that right now with my own show. But the bottom line is find the support. We're the support, mm -hmm. you know, be disciplined mm -hmm. and continue your practice and what you love to do. Loving what you do is the single most important thing, because I find that at this point in my life, being middle aged, I have friends that regret not following certain mm -hmm. dreams, mm -hmm. uh, regret being in jobs where they're making really great money, but they're unfulfilled, they're unsatisfied. Right. You know, they, they didn't follow the thing that they love to do. Right. So that's my best advice of so wisdom, I guess, pearls of wisdom. I love it, it's good. Yeah. Yeah, we're, I think we're very fortunate because we actually do what we love, mm -hmm. um, which I understand is not the case for so many people mm -hmm. out there, right? Because mm -hmm. they have other concerns. Um, I always tell my students that there is no success without failure. The idea of trying something for the first time, they expect to be brilliant and good at it. And right. that doesn't happen. You have to be disciplined and work at it. And you have to have have that desire and that passion to, to really want it. But it takes 
work. This is not magic. Mm-hmm. And that mm-hmm. I constantly tell them. Definitely. That's great. Yeah. Um, I think for me, uh, commit to your goals. Um, it's taken me 20 years to publish this book. I could have given up many times over again and again and again, but I kept at it, kept at it, kept at it. The other thing uh, I think that is important, and I think that we're losing this all over the world, is to learn how to listen to learn rather than to respond. And mm. we just don't have that. Mm. You know, we want to respond so quickly without really learning what you're listening to. And I think also at the end of all this, um, I think you should make your own definition of what success is. I think if you always follow what everybody is saying and what is successful, what's not successful, mm-hmm. you know, you'll get beat up. Mm-hmm. So that's my wisdom. Mm-hmm. Some profound words there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know what? The three of you are stars. And I'm very well, lucky that you. Uh, I'm lucky to have you here <laughs> at the Kendall campus as as faculty members. I know our, our students are very lucky to have you here, the three of you. And, um, you know, we always strive for excellence at this campus and you all exemplify that. So oh, thank, thank you. you. Thank I really you appreciate so much. You being, and taking the time uh, to be here today and to answer my questions and to you know, let people know what you think. Sure. So thank it's you so much. Well, thank these you. Guys. Yeah, we we're. We're a very um, unique situation Mm -hmm. because coming to work every day is like coming to see my family. We've been very tight over a long period of time. We're a strong team team, and Mm -hmm. the kids, the kids sense that. And that's part of the success quotient in our department for sure. So thank you. Thank Thank you. you. Thank Thank you. The three of you. And thank you for joining us on this episode of Keeping Up with Kendall. And I'll catch you next time.